Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to Anaheim our Master of Ceremonies, ABC7 Eyewitness News weekday morning anchor, Mr. Philip Palmer. Well, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. It, it, is, it is afternoon, right? I mean, I, you, I think good morning is just uh, part of my vocabulary so frequently, I almost forget what time of day it is. But uh, thanks for welcoming me back again this year. Always wonderful to see so many familiar faces, so many friends, and uh, so many new people that we get a chance to, to come back and be a part of this organization, this group. And uh, Mayor Tate, members of the Anaheim City Council, city staff, honored guests, business partners and friends on behalf of the city of Anaheim, I want to say welcome to the City National Grove of Anaheim in the 2018 State of the City Luncheon. That's your applause line. So, so when Mayor Tate gets up here and he drops in a line or something, you, go, you jump in, okay? He, it, it's, his speech doesn't work as well if he has to call for that. I don't think he's going to have to, though. Uh, it, is, it is such a pleasure to, to be here uh, to watch his final speech here. Um, it's just been a wonder. It's hard to believe how many years have been uh, going by and you guys still can't find anybody better than me uh, to do this. Um, so I, I, I'm honored that uh, there's no one out there. Uh, but thank you very much again. And, and today is really a very special occasion. It's a significant milestone, as you all know. Uh, Mayor Tate's final State of the City address. And, and we are really very excited to hear from the mayor as he reflects on the past accomplishments. But knowing he still has work to do, he's setting the stage for the future of this incredible, wonderful city. And mayor, we're really excited. Uh, Julie, we're really excited to hear from uh, what the mayor has to say today. Uh, we're also in, uh, wonderfully honored to have uh, Pastor Greg Tucker of Hope Community Church of Anaheim here today. He's going to lead us in our invocation. Pastor Greg and his wife, Penny, have led this church for over 15 years and Hope Community's annual outreach project. A Bag of Hope just finished providing over 700 children in Anaheim with gifts and needed supplies this past Christmas. Uh, Pastor Greg will be followed by the singing of the national anthem sung by Sean Oliu. Sean's back for a second time at the State of the City and he continues to make Anaheim proud. He's raised in our local schools. He's inspired by Mayor Tate and the city of Anaheim's kindness campaign. And think about this, this young man is a sophomore, sophomore, and he's raised $50,000 for local school music programs already. <laughs> you know, Mayor Tate talks about his plans for the future of Anaheim. We got a great plan for our future with kids like Sean, that is for sure. Uh, today, he's a Servite High School student, recently became one of the youngest musketeers to serve in Disney's updated Mickey Mouse Club, so he's a fellow Disney employee, as am I. So please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, stand for our invocation and remain standing for the national anthem. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads and our hearts before you, giving thanks on this day for the opportunity to celebrate Anaheim. This is a place there are moms and dads, people from around the world who scrape and save all year so they can spend maybe three or four days here because this is a place worth coming to. Anaheim is worth their journey. It's worth their time. It's worth their work. And yet we in this room know that Anaheim's magic does not happen by accident. And so we do lift up those who would work for our city our mayor and city council, the firefighters, police, streets and sanitation workers, and countless other department members charged with keeping uh, the machine working and the dream alive. I pray for Anaheim's businesses, from our large corporate partners to all the mom and pop startups and neighborhood strip malls. Reward them and reward their employees as they make good and right and wise decisions. I pray also for the citizens of Anaheim, single or married, young or old, prosperous or impoverished, any persuasion, any orientation, and ask that you would meet their needs, that you would encourage them and let them experience your goodness today. 
Lord, as you know, we in this city are a wonderful mix of Democrats and Republicans and independents. And though perhaps as individuals we approach you from a variety of faiths and traditions, one thing that binds most of us together, whether we've ever put it into words or not, is that each of us is working to create a community that reflects you, a creator who is just and fair and kind. And we recognize, Father, that any time we're about your work, the enemy does not want us to celebrate our past successes or make plans for the future. But today, as we listen to Anaheim's state of the city, we proudly do both. We pray your blessing upon this event and all it represents in your name and to your glory. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the state of the city.
people are connected in the neighborhoods through kindness and you have that community resiliency, we're much better off to deal with any challenges that come our way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anaheim's mayor, the Honorable Tom Tate. I love watching that video, uh, except I've got to say that part about me paying off the bet to the Nashville mayor for the loss of the Predators in the playoff. But, but I, what I love about it is, is seeing all that we've done together this past year. But what I love seeing more is what's happening right now. We are building a culture in Anaheim that is inclusive, expansive, dynamic, and empowering. I see it in the way we support the dreams and aspirations of our residents. I see it in the shift of the city's attention and resources to our neighborhoods. I see it in the way our businesses, large and small, are thriving. I see it in the way our commitment to freedom is creating an environment for entrepreneurs to bring their dreams to life right here in Anaheim. I see it in the way we run our city with a deep, and abiding commitment to kindness. This is all happening for several reasons. The city council moving from citywide to district representation. The kindness campaign taking root and building social infrastructure. Our commitment to making Anaheim a city that welcomes people of all kinds, all ages, all races, and all backgrounds and our commitment to accelerate the growth of small businesses throughout our city. So I'm happy to report that the state of the city of Anaheim is strong and getting stronger every day. Just look around this room and you'll see why. I want to start by recognizing Anaheim Fire and Rescue Chief Randy Brugman and his amazing team. They are outstanding public servants committed to protecting our life and property. In October, during the Canyon Fire II, their skill and expertise was on full display. I've lived here since 1988, and this is one of the most dangerous things I've seen in our city. Deputy Chiefs Pat Russell and Tim O'Hare led their teams who fought to gain control and ex extinguish the fire while helping those in danger to safety. I want everybody Yes. Yes. All firefighters, all firefighters in the room, please stand. I'm going to give you the, Pat, Tim, all firefighters in the room, please stand because this deserves a big thank you from everybody. We've wanted to thank you for a long time. Stand up. Uh, They're kind of shy. No, I hope you feel the appreciation. So, but uh, fire and rescue weren't alone. Every city department stepped up. Public utilities made sure firefighters had enough water. City employees from all departments manned the call centers and managed road traffic so that the police could focus on helping residents in danger. People from all over the city pitched in. In the, in the days immediately after the fires, I met with residents outside their burned homes. They told me how their neighbors had rallied to help them through these most difficult days. Neighbors helping neighbors. It was truly inspiring. There are so many of you, there are so many of you in this room, there are so many of you in this room bringing kindness to life. We have Vino Tinoco and the team at Next Up Foundation are using the sport of skateboarding to teach kids character, values, and responsibility. They've got hundreds of neighborhood kids involved. Not only do they teach them skateboarding, they help them with homework and teach computer skills, truly transforming their lives. We have the folks, at the Bra we have the folks from the Braille Institute with us, located here in West Anaheim. They serve the visually impaired throughout all of Orange County. And they're growing. 
Right now, the Institute is undergoing $10 million, a $10 million construction project so they can help even more residents lead happy and productive lives. And in the Anaheim Resort, Ian Gee, manager of the Sheridan Park Hotel, heard from a local resident about the unique needs of autistic individuals and their families. Now imagine an a family with an autistic child coming here on va the vacation of their lives to Anaheim. They deserve it to be wonderful, but they may, they may need some help to make it happen. This got Ian's attention, and he went to work. He invested in special equipment and meal plans, as well as places for parents to take their child in case they needed a, some, a quiet place. He's doing everything he can to help autistic children and adults have a great experience during their stay at the Sheridan and in Anaheim. This is kindness in action. Now here's something I get asked all the time. When is Bruno Serrato's Anaheim White House restaurant opening? Yes. Well, the answer is very soon. Bruno tells me March-ish sometime. Make reservations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make your reservations. Exactly. So when it, when it does open, and that's soon, we'll have, we'll have I, I believe, our city's premier dining destination back on, back on track. However, what's most inspiring is that the restaurant fire did not stop Bruno from serving up to 4,000 hot meals, pasta meals, to kids every night, every single night. And I'm very happy to report that Anaheim's oldest known resident, Elmer Thill, is with us again this year. He turns 104 on April 11th. Where's Elmer? There he is. Born in Anaheim, one of the most strongest and most resilient people I know. The entire city loves you, Elmer. And um, I want to take a moment uh, to thank our MC, our host, Philip Palmer. He's been volunteering to do this for an awfully long time. There's Philip. Um, here's something you, you might not know about Philip. Where is he? Did he show up? Oh, there he is. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embarrass him a little bit. But uh, 10 years ago, Philip actually donated one of his kidneys to a coworker at KBC. And, yeah. So he did this without hesitation. He just did it. Uh, that is the power of kindness. One kind man, wonderful person. Philip, thank you for your friendship. And on behalf of Anaheim, thank you for hosting this so, for so many years. Thank you. Thank you. So um, now I am going to the most important people in my life I want to introduce. Uh, I want to start with, I'm so blessed and lucky and fortunate to have my mom and dad here, uh, Ken and Val Tate. Thank you for being here again. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful people. Have my, uh, my brother Rich, my sister Liz, my uh, sister-in-law Amy Skinner are here. They're sitting back over there, put up with me for a long time. We have, uh, Julie and I, we have all of our kids here. We have Whitney and her husband, Adam DeFrancis. Uh, they are, probably more importantly, they are uh, the parents of Hudson and Nolan. We have Kendall here, our daughter, who is getting married in a couple months. She's up here. She's a nurse at Scripps in San Diego. She's up here today. Uh, Colin, our son, is working in Los Angeles in uh, financial services. And our son Trevor is here, and his wife, is, Tori, is home with their newborn, a uh, one-month-old Caroline, Caroline May, and uh, they're all here with us today. So uh, the most important person in my life is, uh, the, is I want to introduce my wife, Julie. She is a wonderful, incredible wife, mother, now grandmother, uh, and I think I can't imagine a better first lady for the city of Anaheim for these past seven years. My wife, Julie Tate. So 
so uh, she is really loving this uh, whole grandmother thing. We, she has a sign in the kitchen that says, um, grandchildren, welcome, kids by appointment only. <laughs> so anyway, it's, um, I'm very blessed. Such a wonderful family, wonderful wife. So um, let's see, on to sports. Our sports teams continue to generate excitement and still pride in our community. The Anaheim Ducks are back in the hunt for a playoff spot. With Captain Ryan Getzloff's return to the ice after surgery and playing like a potential MVP, the Ducks are in the midst, in the midst of a second half surge. In case you've missed it, they've beaten the Kings the last two times they played, and that is the best part. The Angels have generated the biggest offseason news in, in baseball with the signing of Japanese phenom Shohei, Ata Shohei Atani. He's not just a world-class pitcher, he's a prolific home run hitter. Baseball hasn't seen a dual threat like Shohei since Babe Ruth. Paired with the great Mike Trout, Shohei promises to make the Angels season the most exciting in years. And in the Anaheim Resort, we're more than halfway through the largest expansion of the Disneyland Park since Walt Disney built the park in 1955. Star Wars Galaxy Edge is set to open next year, bringing millions of new visitors to our city. Meanwhile, a California adventure work is underway at, at the Pixar Pier. Opening its doors in April, the new land will showcase beloved Pixar stories, including Toy Story, The Incredibles, and Inside Out. We've just wrapped up our first year of district representation, a transition that will be completed this November with the election of the last two council seats. District representation is, is a foundational governance change for Anaheim and its residents. As we have already seen, it brings our council much closer to the neighborhoods. In District 1, representing West Anaheim, Council Member Denise Barnes has been a tireless advocate for her neighbors. Committed to safe, well-kept parks, and to accelerating the upkeep of roads in her district and throughout the city. She led the effort to bring more effective security to our parks with cameras and security guards. As we move forward with efforts to revitalize Beach Boulevard, Denise is West Anaheim's most passionate voice on the council. District 3, representing central North Anaheim, council member Jose Moreno was just named this year's mayor pro tem. One of his key accomplishments was the adoption of a sunshine ordinance giving Anaheim the strongest ethics rules in any city in Orange County. He helped create a framework for the city's homelessness efforts by chairing the Homeless Policy Working Group. And he recently led the effort to secure four acres of new parkland in downtown. District 4, Councilmember Lucille Kring represents the neighbors of South, An South Anaheim and the hotels, restaurants, theme parks in the Anaheim Resort. Her main focus is helping the businesses in her district grow. In November, we saw the unveiling of a 200,000 200, square foot expansion of the Anaheim Convention Center. The expanded convention center has welcomed thousands of visitors, including the record 115,000 last month at NAM, our largest annual convention. District 5, East Central Anaheim. Council Member Stephen Fessel, has worked closely with neighbors to address the impact of homelessness along the Santa Ana River. He's also working closely with community services to map out the future of Anaheim's parks. Stephen has really taken district representation to heart by getting to know his community and engaging in a wide variety, wide variety of neighborhood initiatives. <clears throat> Our council's two at-large members are Chris Murray and James Vanderbilt. Council member, council member Murray brought needed attention and focus to the increased number of homeless uh, at the Santa Ana River. In December, she initiated, initiated a community triage day, bringing access to shelter and needed services to the homeless along the river trail. As a result, 55 additional people have begun the process to find permanent housing. 
Chris is a passionate advocate for Anaheim's interest, serving on the regional planning agency that focuses on infrastructure needs all throughout Southern California. Serving on the council since 2014, James Vanderbilt has been inv invaluable to Anaheim by helping to activate city government's connections with our neighborhoods. He served on our homeless policy working group and strives for common ground and common sense policies on the city council. And council member Vanderbilt began his own privately funded website and face page, anaheimcare.com. His goal is to help residents direct food and other resources to Anaheim's most vulnerable. To, to all my colleagues on the city council, it's been my honor to serve with you this past year. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to every one of Anaheim's districts. <clears throat> I, want to thank, I want to thank our interim city manager, Linda Andall. From her first day on the job, she's focused on building a culture of kindness within the city workforce. She's brought a fresh energy and strong leadership to the office. And I'm pleased to report she's managing the city's operations on budget. And that isn't easy, but she's making it happen. Thanks to Linda and her executive team, keep up the good work. As Linda is dealing with our short-term budget issues, our, lo our long-term fiscal challenges remain. If you're, if you're our last year's state of the city, you heard me speak in detail about our huge un underfunded pension liability and the impact of the recent luxury hotel subsidies. Dealing with these challenges will require continuous belt tightening in the years to come. Now I want to take a moment to thank our previous chief of police, Raul Casada. Raul was a leader in the creation of real and effective community policing. His work was transformational for Anaheim. And our new acting chief, Julian Harvey, who is a key leader in that transformation, is continuing to invest in our commitment to protect our neighborhoods. He's increasing the number of police cars on patrol, building stronger relationships with residents in every neighborhood, and expanding effective interactions with the schools. I'm, re I'm reminded, I'm re excuse me, I'm reminded of those terrible days after the shooting on Anna Drive in 2012. It was terrible for the victims, their families, their neighbors, the police, and for us all. It became national news and a sign of the urban challenges we are facing. Anna Drive had been a troubled neighborhood for decades. It was clear that what we'd been doing just wasn't working at all. We needed a new approach. Something needed to change, and it did. Protests turned into riots last night in Anaheim. 200 police officers from surrounding cities were called in. Yet for now, this city is just trying to secure its streets. Anna Drive uh, six years ago in 2012 um, was a different place than it is today. There was a lot of issues with uh, the cops and the youth, the gang, drugs. It was not really safe to bring your kids out and play in the patios. Gang members were posted up at both entrances to the neighborhood, mostly to intimidate the residents. We're only as effective as residents willing to step up and say, you know what, this is where we live, this is home, and we're going to take ownership over our neighborhood. So I decided to get in contact with Anaheim Police Department Chief, and I decided to talk to the mayor, to the city councils, because it, it was very important for me to let them know the problem. Since our efforts with controlling the gang problem in there and actually really reducing crime and improving conditions, it led to greater trust between the residents and the police department, that they recognized we were there to help. Public Works came in and fixed sidewalks, fixed leaky pipes, trimmed trees. We have new signs. We also have the street bumps to prevent cars that they speed. We have a lot of places that is really dark, and now we have more lights. Some of the specific programming that has directly impacted Anna Drive, a greater presence of our Cops for Kids program, which is our nonprofit. Their whole purpose is to serve 
underserved neighborhoods like Anna Drive to provide avenues for young people that are more positive. Every Wednesday we have a special parking for the library for an hour for the kids. They can do reading, they can do math, but they also have uh, activities. You see that there's a need in neighborhoods like Anna Drive for institutions to step in and really do everything they can for the young people in there to make them successful. After the unrest, we were invited by the mayor to consider coming to Anaheim and serving the young adult population that was here who were lacking opportunities and hope that they could really be more than maybe the neighborhoods that they came from. Hope Builders equips young people with the life and the job skills they need to build success in their personal and professional lives. I read about the tragedies uh, that had occurred and I ended up speaking with Mayor Tom Tate and I offered to engage kids in the park and by sports, you know, be a positive role model with them. And that's how it all got started. There are so many great things going on here at Higher Ground. Of course, all sports, so many enrichment activities. It would be so difficult for a child to not find a couple of things that they would truly fall in love with here. The big motivation for myself, it's my family, my kids, my grandkids. Because definitely if my grandkids are gonna be living in Anaheim, I want the best for them. To provide avenues for the young people who live in there, when you eliminate that influence of the gang and you provide this programming, it's the recipe for success. By the way, you just saw Yesenia Rojas in that video. She is a force of nature, pride of Wanawaka. I want to personally thank Yesenia for her incredible commitment to turn her neighborhood around. And I can tell you what happened on Anna Drive simply would not have happened without her. Yesenia. And, and I'm so proud of our police. Their commitment to community policing is real and it's paying off. In 2012, crime in Anaheim, since 2012, crime in Anaheim has dropped 7% and violent crime has dropped more. Homicides have dropped 33%, burglary 16%, and assault with a deadly weapon 13%. These statistics are encouraging. The police are effectively building social capital by holding people accountable, while at the same time building trust in the neighborhoods with genuine acts of kindness. Please help me in thanking them for their incredible dedication and commitment to our well-being. As you saw in the video, Hope Builders has played an important role in the transition of the neighborhoods. Hope Builders is one of the many nonprofits supported by ACT Anaheim. ACT Anaheim is partnering with dozens of effective nonprofits to change the lives of the city's youth. Three years ago, we decided to donate all the proceeds of the State of the City events to ACT. I'm proud to let you know that since then, including today's record breaking $90,000, we've raised over $300,000 for ACT and for the youth they serve. So thank you again for all being here. When I first ran for mayor in 2010, I spoke about revitalizing the city through a focus of kindness and freedom. This has always been about building stronger social infrastructure by connecting with each other and unleashing the energy and brilliance of all the people who live, learn, and work here. As you know, in November, the city council unanimously approved the city of kindness as Anaheim's official city motto. And we've been saying, yeah. Now we've been saying it for years, but now it's official. It's our guiding principle. It's who we are, and it's who we aspire to be. Anaheim is publicly committed to building a culture of kindness where we 
where we do something good for someone without any expectation of return. We commit to teaching our kids that acting with kindness works, that it feels good, that it's virtuous, that it helps make their schools and parks and playgrounds safer, more inclusive, and more fun. Kindness is contagious. It overcomes things like frustration, pettiness, anger, jealousy, even hate. Creating trust, openness, enthusiasm, and possibility. It's doing the right thing, even when that right thing seems difficult. What gives me the most satisfaction is that Anaheim's commitment to kindness will outlast all of us in this room. As I said earlier, kindness takes hold when we teach kindness to our children. No one understands this better than the Dalai Lama. As you know, he became aware of our kindness campaign a few years ago. He has been very encouraging, for which I am profoundly grateful. This past June, the Dalai Lama gave the commence commencement address at, the, at UC San Diego. A few weeks before that, I approached his emissary, Lama Tenzin Dowden, to see if the Dalai Lama could come here to talk to our school principals and leaders. Thankfully, the Dalai Lama said yes, he was happy to come. He did, and this, he did this because he knows we are building a city of kindness. He wanted, he wanted us to know that creating cultures of kindness and compassion throughout the world is key to achieving world peace. He wanted to make sure that we understood that this only happens when we teach kindness and compassion to every generation. In his remarks, he called Anaheim's educators and city leaders captains in this effort. He challenged us to always nurture an enduring culture of kindness in our schools. It was a very powerful message. And today, I'm so honored we have a special guest with us, my friend, Lama Tenzin Dowden, the Dalai Lama's Emissary for Peace. Lama, Lama Tenzin, thank you so much for being here. Lama Tenzin also brought His Holiness to Anaheim for the, his 80th birthday celebration a couple years ago. As you know, businesses large and small are a key to a healthy and productive thriving city. Research constant, consistently tells us that up to 70% of new jobs are created by small businesses. Let me repeat that, 70%. We are totally committed to helping entrepreneurs bring their dreams to reality right here in Anaheim. We need their passion, their innovations, their products, their products, and the jobs they create. The past few years, the City Council, over my strenuous objections, has negotiated large subsidies for our largest businesses. We know from recent academic research that this approach doesn't work. Economic incentives, such as these subsidies, have zero impact on job creation. Zero impact. So the time has come to deliberately shift our city's economic strategy for growth from giving government subsidies to large businesses to focusing our efforts to supporting entrepreneurs and small businesses. And Here's our new strategy. We're going to invest in our kids and teach them to be entrepreneurs, while at the same time making Anaheim the destination for new businesses to open and thrive. Just like our kindness campaign, it begins with our kids, specifically our high school kids, which is why four years ago we launched a mentoring program, Anaheim Innovative Mentoring Experience, better known as AIM. <clears throat> Every year, businesses set up internships for students exposing them to the business world. So far, over 2,100 Anaheim High School students have gone through the AIM program. Many have been inspired to pursue college, job training, and more apprenticeship experiences. Recently, the Tesla Foundation, whose mission is to promote the skills needed for young people to succeed in a global economy, was looking for one city in America to test their ideas. They chose our city because the Anaheim Union High School District's commitment to teaching their students kindness and character. Yeah. A 
Through the AIM program, they'll be showing our kids what it means to innovate on, and how to do it themselves. And we're not stopping there. The high school district is introducing, is introducing curriculum about entrepreneurism, teaching students what entrepreneurs do, understanding how money and finances work, learning what a business plan is and how to set goals, learning how to create a collaborative, team-oriented organization. This curriculum and AIM are all, are all about building confidence and inspiring Anaheim's next generation of entrepreneurs. This is the first leg of our strategy, strategy, and here's the second. When these young men and women are ready to bring their new business dreams to life, Anaheim's entrepreneurial ecosystem will be there to support them. I call it Freedom City. Seven years ago, we, we created the Regulatory Relief Task Force. Since then, Anaheim has eliminated more than 75 unneeded and burdensome regulations. For example, we eliminated the requirement for a conditional use permit, or called a CUP, for many small businesses like pet groomers, dry cleaners, tile businesses, daycare centers, dance studios, and many more. Eliminating the requirement for a CUP saves time and money, and more importantly, it gives the entrepreneur a new level of certainty that he or she can move forward with their business plan. We also created a business concierge program, providing a single point of contact to ensure timely action on plan review and granting permits. The concierge makes it much easier to get your project through City Hall. We're seeing the results all around our city, like the many new industrial businesses popping up in the canyon, and the eateries along Center Street Promenade, including the House of Chimney Cakes, run by Hungarian immigrant Sandra Zabo and the many wonderful cafes and restaurants found in Little Arabia, like Mahar's, Mahar Nikal's Le Mirage Pastry. These are great examples of our success. However, for me, the best example is something we launched a few years ago. Can you guess what I'm referring to? That's right, Brew City. <laughs> Good guess. Brew City. Now, don't get me wrong, I like all beers, but by far my favorite my favorites are the fabulous craft beers made right here in Anaheim. There are now 15 great craft breweries open today with about a half dozen more on the way. By reducing red tape and making it easier for these small breweries to open, we have truly become Brew City. Now here's what we're going to do next. The task force has turned its attention to bringing regulatory relief to both new and existing restaurants. Beer City, meet Food City. Yes. <laughs> Talking about a beer made me thirsty. So we're going to begin with a streamlined process called Express CUP. The idea is to cut red tape so restaurants can more easily open and begin serving customers. This isn't only available to new restaurants, it's also available to any existing restaurant that like to offer beer and wine with dinner or add outdoor dining. Anaheim is known for our craft beers, and now we're quickly becoming known for our authentically ethnic cuisine, mom and pop restaurants, and hip eateries, all at prices millennials can't afford. The task force is now planning to make Express CUP available to many types of businesses like auto repair, fitness studios, offices in the industrial zones, and business schools. Entrepreneurs have a choice when looking for the best place to open and expand their businesses. In most cities, it can take up to six months or even a year to get through the red tape so they can open. Here in Anaheim, we're simplifying the process, reducing uncertainty, and cutting the cost of doing business so entrepreneurs can choose Anaheim more than any other city. Here's one more thing many residents aren't aware of. Anaheim is home to one of North America's leading transportation management companies, Econolite. They're committed to advancing the advancement of connected vehicles and other leading edge technologies. Tomorrow I'll be attending the ribbon cutting at Econolite's new 90,000 square foot facility. This is important for us because all over the world, people are experiencing a revolution in mobility, fueled by the advancements of intelligent transportation systems and the emerging network of connected driverless vehicle technologies. Anaheim has a long-standing partnership with UC Irvine, which works with companies like Econolite. 
We're working with UCI to further their research into intelligent transportation technologies right here on our streets. These ideas are changing how city policy leaders look at everyday issues, like reducing crashes, parking infrastructure, energy efficiency, and alternative transportation technologies. It's really exciting to imagine that the impact these innovations will have the next few years. I'm also really excited about what's happening with Beach Boulevard. Here's my vision. I believe we can create the Sunset Boulevard of Orange County. Think about the name, Beach Boulevard. It brings up images of an exciting and memorable drive through Anaheim all the way to the Pacific Ocean. We have put together a coalition of all the cities along the route committed to this vision. Imagine a boulevard that runs from La Habra to the surf of Huntington Beach with sidewalk dining, eclectic shopping, and unique hotels, all with an identifiable brand and consistent theme. Our plan is to bring fresh energy and attract new investment with new zoning and regulatory relief. I know that Beach Boulevard will be transformed and we will see this vision come to life. All the, business, all the business growth I've talked about will be fueled by our shift from subsidies to building a 21st century entrepreneurial ecosystem in Anaheim. Anaheim is now and will continue to be the best place to open a new business in all of California, hands down. There's one more key initiative that will directly impact business development. I'm noticing something very interesting about who's actually starting many of our new businesses. They're immigrants and children of immigrants. Research tells us that one of the best predictors of a city's entrepreneurial growth is the size of its immigrant population. The bigger the population is, the more likely a city's economy will grow. And we're really lucky here in Anaheim because we have a massive immigrant population that gives us a big advantage over other cities. Approximately 150,000 of Anaheim's residents are either foreign-born or the children of foreign-born parents. That's 40% of our residents. So in my view, the next important thing we can do to drive business growth is to bring these great people into the fabric of our city. We need to ask, what does Anaheim look like from the eyes of an immigrant? Is Anaheim a welcoming city? Are we kind to people who have come here, often escaping difficult situations in their home countries? Is Anaheim a safe place for immigrants to live, work, and bring their dreams to life? And I think we are. But I think we can do better. We can be more mindful of their needs. In October, the City Council overwhelmingly passed a measure officially making Anaheim a welcoming city. This means we've committed to creating a system of community integration that encourages all of our schools, our churches, our businesses, every one of us to welcome newcomers to Anaheim, to talk to them and get to know them. It means constantly looking for new ways to empower our immigrants to bring their, lives, their dreams to life here. It's in everyone's best interest to make this happen. Now, I hope you've seen that our shift to our neighborhoods is everywhere. Anna Drive, West Anaheim, Beach Boulevard, Little Arabia, and the Anaheim Canyon. Just look at what's happened at Ponderosa Park. In December, a new $16 million community center opened for residents. In addition to offering numerous family and kid activities, the facility is a family resource center where, for, where, where working families come for help and support. Ponderosa now plays a big role in the lives of residents, many of whom are first and second generation. In my first year as your mayor, I introduced the High Neighbor Program to strengthen our community bonds the old-fashioned way. Neighbors getting to know neighbors and working together to build communities. When we connect with our neighbors, we become safer, better prepared for emergencies, and just plain happier. Two years ago, I told you about the German word Mitzheim. In, in English, it means something like being with. And, and that's what High Neighbor is really all about being with. And today I want to call on all residents to pitch in with a problem that we're facing that is sad and that we need to confront. The problem is elderly isolation, or in other words, loneliness. 
We know that in every one of our communities, there are senior citizens living alone. This isn't just living alone, it's being alone. According to SeniorServe, in Anna, excuse me, excuse me. According to SeniorServe, an Anaheim-based senior service nonprofit, 22% of Orange County seniors live alone, compared, with, compared to the national average of 17%. 43% of older adults in Orange County have reported not having anyone to help them when they experience difficulties. 14% of residents, 14,000 14, residents in long-term care have no friends or family members visiting or actively involved in their care. Studies show that loneliness is severely harmful to both mental and physical health. So that's a problem. What are we going to do about it? To begin with, we are asking all of our residents to show their kindness and find seniors living alone. Visit them. Get to know them. Listen to their stories and ultimately become a friend. <clears throat> I know SeniorServe would love for any of, any of you to join their friendly visitor program that provides companionship to homebound seniors. In the United Kingdom, they're doing something similar. They call their program the Great Door Knock. This is simply people going to, neighbor, to a neighborhood, actually knocking on the doors of senior citizens' home and saying hello. Perhaps we can do the same here. We're also asking the schools to get involved, connecting students with the elderly through essay contests and visits to long care long-term care facilities. And at the end of this year, I propose that we come together as a city and put on a senior festival celebrating all of our, all of our elderly neighbors. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm simply asking all of us to step up and say hi and get to know these wonderful people. The issue we've been working on the hardest is homelessness. This has been an issue for American cities for generations. Some ask me on this issue, why do we have a, non, a no camping ordinance? Well, our public places belong to all of our residents. They, they can and should only be used for the intended purpose. Our public places are not suitable places for camping. A small a small percentage of those camping in our parks who, or along the riverbed or on the streets are also criminals who happen to be homeless. And those people need to be held accountable. However, most of the people are not criminals and we have a duty to reach out to them, to treat them with kindness and to help those that need help. For many, the issue of homelessness may feel like you know, For many, the issue of homelessness may feel like it's impossible to solve, but here's why we should be optimistic. In Orange County, with a population of over 3 million people, there are approximately 5,000 homeless people. That's 0.002% of us. It sure seems to me that 99.98% of us who have homes should be able to solve this problem. We just need to pull together the 34 cities in Orange County and coordinate the efforts of all nonprofits and faith-based organizations and businesses working on this issue. Homelessness is the result of a lot of factors. Poverty, lack of affordable housing, unemployment, drug addiction, mental illness, family violence, and more. As you know, Orange County is working to remove the homeless camped along the Santa Ana River Trail. Our job is to reach out to these people while also ensuring that our parks and libraries are safe and used for their, its intended purposes. Here's what Anaheim has done so far. In 2014, we announced Coming Home Anaheim. This is our comprehensive plan to address homelessness. The city's job is to effectively coordinate the efforts of literally thousands of people reaching out to the homeless. We do this through CityNet and the Homeless Collaborative, a group made up of over 100 churches, nonprofits, and community groups. To date, they have helped transition 960 people off the streets of Anaheim into long-term housing, 
or reunification with family. <coughs> This is no small accomplishment. The homeless issue is really complicated. Each of these 960 people is an individual with his, with his or her own unique circumstances. Here's just one example. In 2014, unable to work due to a disability, Teresa ended up living by herself in her car. She basically had nothing. CityNet case managers heard about her with the help of two local churches and other volunteers they made sure Teresa had food and clothing. Then Mercy House and the Illumination Foundation joined the effort, successfully getting her into safe transitional housing at Grandma's House of Hope Emergency Shelter. Now she's in permanent supportive housing and she's doing well. Teresa is with us today. She's here representing all the 960 people we have helped to date. So let me be clear. To get Teresa out of her car and into permanent housing, it took CityNet, the Homeless Collaborative, two churches, Mercy House, the Illumination Foundation, and Grandma's House of Hope. So homeless, homelessness, and this is what I've learned, is such a complicated issue. But our community is making headway. Here's how I know. Of the 960 people put in housing, 883 are still housed today. That's 92%. And there's more good news. Under the leadership of the city council, Anaheim is a host city to Orange County's bridges at Kramer Place. Since opening in May 2017, the shelter has helped scores of people by providing immediate, immediate shelter and transitional services to break the cycle of homelessness. This summer, they're set to open the second phase of bridges at Kramer Place Shelter, providing an additional 100 beds. And again, I want to thank our Anaheim City Council for taking the courageous stand and building the first homeless shelter in Orange County. Thank you. In addition, Anaheim is effect effectively tackling the job issue. It begins with our, no our new program, Better Way Anaheim. This is essentially a volunteer program launched in December, offering simple but real job experiences for the homeless, and we do this through Love Anaheim. We all know the powerful impact a job has on a person's dignity and confidence. This year, we're preparing to partner with Chrysalis, a cutting-edge organization dedicated to getting the homeless into good-paying jobs. Chrysalis actually hires the individuals themselves, and then a company hires Chrysalis. This reduces the hiring risk for a company that wants to give a homeless person a job and a chance at a new life. We look forward to them being up and running in Anaheim this fall. There's no city in Orange County doing more than Anaheim to effectively tackle the issue of homelessness. I want to thank CityNet, the Homeless Collaborative, housing providers, city employees, and the police for their extraordinary work on this issue. Drug addiction is a tough issue, very tough issue. Not simply for the homeless, but for people throughout Anaheim. In 2016, we announced Drug Free Anaheim. It's simple but revolutionary. Any addict who is looking to get well can go to any police station and ask for help. The police will connect him or her with a drug recovery program. So far, more than 225 people have taken part in this program. One young man, Brian, had been struggling with addiction for years. A friend stepped in and contacted the police, who, th <coughs> excuse me, who through social recovery model were able to get him into the Anaheim Lighthouse for treatment. Today, Brian attends Celebrate Recovery meetings and works at both Rapid Manufacturing Company and P.F. Chang's. He's even counseling other recovering addicts. This past Friday, Brian marked nine months of sobriety, and he joins us today. Way to go, Brian. Brian and Teresa, your city is with you. So, 
I am an optimistic man. Every year I've given the State of the City Address, I've said something like, I've never been more optimistic about our city's future, and I've always meant it. This year, what makes me so certain that we're becoming the great city we imagine is the incredible progress we've made together on all fronts. Difficult issues like fighting crime, reducing homelessness, and addressing drug addiction. Costly issues like infrastructure, reinvigorating depressed neighborhoods, building parks and roads. Growth issues like creating real lasting opportunity for businesses of all sizes to grow and prosper. And most important, human issues, building a culture of kindness that will outlast us all. I'm honored to be your mayor. The people of Anaheim inspire me every day. I will continue to I will continue to encouraging everyone to actively participate in making Anaheim the best place in America to live. And I'm going to say it again. I've truly never been more optimistic about our city's future. Thank you. <laughs> So you may know that uh, to kick off my first state of the city in 2011, we had the, the wonderful Anaheim Ballet perform. Uh, we wanted to start it with beauty. So this be my last, we want to end with beauty. So may I introduce the Anaheim Ballet. <laughs> Wow, wow. 
Thank you. Thank you, Larry and Simon Rosenberg. Thank you, beautiful, wonderful Anaheim Ballet. That was a gift. That was a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. God bless this great city. Thank you.